Imagine a world where everything you see is made of chocolate. In the seaside town called Brighton is the most magical chocolate shop on earth. Where a team of chocolatiers live in a topsy-turvy world, conjuring the magic of Christmas well ahead of time and creating fairy tale houses for the rich and famous. This isn't just chocolate. This is Chocky Wocky Doodah. It's November in Brighton, and the band of chocolatiers at Chocky Wocky Doodah have only one thing on their minds. Christmas. A little bit of health and safety. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> if they're to take the festive season by storm, they need to pull out all the stops for their most important window display of the year. It wouldn't be a Christmas window without a little stress. <laughs> Will there be tears, arguments, tantrums? Oh, will it all go really nice and easy? It could be all of the above. <laughs> and they're under pressure to build scores of unique fairy tale houses for their regular celebrity customers. They are a mammoth effort. There's nothing that I've done which is more complicated than this. Catching the Christmas rush is vital for Chucky Wocky Doodah, and owner Christy knows they need a street stopping shop front. Every year at Christmas, we come up with a whole new concept that starts with an amazing window. It's a piece of sheer self-indulgence. Christine has called a staff meeting to plan the window. She has a strong idea for a magical Cinderella pantomime theme, but chief designer Dave wants a totally different look. I think we should do folk art for Christmas and not Cinderella. This sort of stag motif and reindeer, it would be a great thing to do for Christmas. Don't let me down, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> there are certain stipulations that he must work to to suit me, but above and beyond that, this is Dave's window. Dave's persuaded Christine with his big idea, and it's agreed that the centrepiece of the crucial Christmas window will be a life-size stag. And Dave's getting himself in the mood for the festive challenge. I have made a bit of an effort today as I'm working on the Christmas project. So I'm looking like a Victorian butcher, which is nice, I think. <laughs> Crafting the four-foot stag is going to take a massive 150 kilos of chocolate. And even with 10 years' experience, it's Dave's most daunting task yet. It's definitely the biggest chocolate sculpture I've made today is just about content and how big it is and just melting chocolate and making it and making it and making it. It's going to take Dave days to make the stag and as many as 50 bowls of chocolate to sculpt and mould the body shape alone. This is all about, oh my God, <laughs> it's going to take 100 boxes of chocolate to make this. At the moment, he looks a bit like a Christmas greyhound, but by the end of the day, he will look majestic and proud and very, very Christmassy. But the rest of the studio staff aren't convinced. It looks like sea lion or something like that, yeah. Yeah, I was the one that said it looked like a dog. It looks like kangaroo. <laughs> <laughs> kangaroo, stag, you know. <laughs> In a dark night, who can tell the difference? <laughs> While Dave is struggling to rear a stag, his second-in-command, Tom, has a massive Christmas job of his own. Each year, the studio makes scores of bespoke chocolate houses for important celebrity clients. It's always interesting when you've got something to do which isn't actually a cake. The houses have a Hansel and Gretel theme, a tale which Tom has his own special take on. What I remember of it um, goes something along the lines of Hansel and Gretel a couple of stupid German kids walking through a forest, stumbled across this house, and there was like a wicked witch or something that tried to cook him in her oven or something like that. Inspired he may be, but so far Tom's attempts have not met Christine's fantastical vision. The houses that have been made so far look as though they're from the same estate. I want a little bit of Tom's soul in them. You can have a large chunk of my soul in Yeah, this good. Because <laughs> I was going to try and bosh them out, but... No, Bosh out? Yeah. Six houses identical? Yeah. No, we're not creating social housing. <laughs> These are magnificent houses for fairies. Okay. Excellent. He has to break out 
of his normal, quite uptight, little bit anal desire to make sure that all right angles are perfect. This is about soft lines, and he has to get this so right. On hand to help Tom construct the fairy tale houses is Jenny, an expert in chocolate miniatures. I'm doing a little vegetable patch and trees like this one, but with flower pots as well. As well as the cabbages, flowers and chickens, Tom takes Christine's fairy tale vision literally. Don't know how impossible it would be for you to make a little fairy. <laughs> it would just be like, it would, I imagine it being a tiny little cone. Yeah. With a little ball on top. Yeah. It's cone, ball, wings. I'll give it a go, it. but yeah. I can't promise anything. While Jenny has to go small scale, Dave is going big. The responsibility of the Christmas window is on his shoulders, and he's battling to carve out the giant stag. Normally, I'd use this knife doing my sculpting, but I'm using this knife today. And to make absolutely certain it's not confused with any other animals, he's also crafting some solid chocolate antlers. Suddenly, the llama turns into a deer. It's taken Tom and Jenny an incredible two days' work, but construction of their celebrity Hansel and Gretel house is finally taking shape. If you see me doing anything which involves straight lines, then I'm doing it wrong. Tom's raised a chimney stack from marshmallows, tiled the roof with jazzy chocolate buttons, and has the skilled hands of Jenny to help craft a cake fit for a fairy tale. Just going to do a little head. That's better, isn't it? Ah, oh, brilliant. And then I'll, <laughs> I'll completely glitter it. Ooh. The house that Tom and Jenny have built looks a masterpiece. I should do it. With its opulent layers of sweets, intricately carved figurines, and with minute attention to detail, the final touch, Jenny's angel. Finished. I love it. Who wouldn't? Tom may be pleased, but the house could face demolition if quality surveyor Christine doesn't approve. Hi, guys. Hello, Chris. Oh, Tom. Oh. Tom, better come and talk to me. Oh. oh. Tom. Chris. We have cauliflowers in this garden. <laughs> And what of Jenny's angel? And I love the white sparkly dove and the puppy a lot. <laughs> Where's the dove? <laughs> That's not a dove, it's an angel. <laughs> but it looks like a dove. <laughs> <laughs> I can give it a bit more of a tail to make it look more dovish. I don't think we need to do anything to it at all. I think it is what you see. OK. <laughs> Completely magical. It's absolutely fantastic. Tom may feel like a master builder, but the construction time has put the house £300 over budget. Christine, the company's frugal business manager, has concerns about spiralling costs. Somebody will love it. I look at it and I see money going through our fingers like that because that has cost us too much to make. Also splurging a king's ransom in chocolate, 150 kilos of it, is Dave, building the Christmas stag. This is roughly about my fourth day of making the stag now, on and off. I've been doing, making the Santa as well and doing other bits and bobs. But today is the day I finished him completely. Using only the finest implements, Dave's magnificent beast is coming to life. It's a very specialist chocolatier tool here. You wouldn't get this in a normal kitchen, obviously. Just getting two eyes the same. I think I've got it pretty much spot on there. But just when it's all going so well, disaster strikes. Oh my god, I've broken it. It's soon meant to take centre stage of their Christmas window, but will it now be just another legless stag in Brighton? And Tom's facing a housing crisis after a celebrity shopper spots his Hansel and Gretel work and puts in a massive order. I'm going to have to work flat out now to get this one and that one finished. That's a very strict deadline. Chocky Wocky Doodah are preparing for Christmas and have a Yule tidal wave of work on their hands. 
Tom has to craft chocolate houses for important celebrity clients, and the day to change over to the all-important festive window is here. Putting the Christmas window in before has been an absolute nightmare. And today's proving no different. The star of the show, Dave's 150 kilo life-size stag, has a broken leg. The team have decided to move it and fix it at the shop, but they can't afford any more slip-ups. Oh, 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 I've got Halloween in the shop where I should have Christmas. At this rate, Christmas isn't going in until Valentine's Day. I want everybody to get a bloody move on. I got the head, I got the head. It's taken a week's work and the whole of the Christmas campaign is riding on Dave's fragile stag. Watch the tail. Yep, yeah, it's fine now. That's all right, yeah. See you in a bit. Until the window display is in, business is off. The chocolate stag has already cracked up, and now, so has Christine. Get the Halloween window out. Finally, can we put Christmas in? <laughs> or should we wait? We'll leave it for another year. Maybe this year. <laughs> we won't bother with Christmas. Right, let's go. It's a bit worrying that there's still a leg in the van. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not worried about that. Worse. The disabled stag. After persuading Christine to go for the stag in the first place, Dave better save the day and save the leg. I've got all my vet needs in this box. We will cure I will rebuild him. the stag. But with precious retail hours slipping away, Christine seeing her profits melting. Chaos puts people off, it frightens people. When we build a new window, we'll put in loads of new stock, and I don't want to lose Dave's business. I don't want to be angry with everybody, but I do want them to feel my anguish. The pressure is mounting, and ever ready to step into the breach is Dave's second in command, Tom. Dave, um is always grateful for my help. So you're just going to put a big lump of chocolate and weld them all together? Yeah. OK. And hopefully that should give them enough strength to hold. Basically, the moment of truth will be when I take my hands away. Yeah. And the antlers don't fall down. <laughs> you know, when it comes down to it, he needs help when he needs help, you know, we'll get there. We'll meet the deadline. With its broken leg repaired and Tom's invaluable help, the stag is transformed into a magical beast with its golden antlers. We're halfway. It's looking fabulous, but we are only halfway. But then all Christine's Christmas helpers throw themselves into action. And three hours later, the festive window is complete. Beautiful. I think it's stunning. This is always going to be one of Dave's pièces de résistance. Um, he's been aching to create this stag for a long time and we have to have the right reason to indulge ourselves with a project of this size. And this year, of course, it's Christmas. It's the end of a long day, but Chucky Wocky Doodah have, at last, got Christmas up and running. Word quickly spreads about the window, and a commission has come in for a big festive event in Brighton. In December, 24 of the town's famous beach huts are turned into the doors of a giant advent calendar, and the event organiser wants an iconic cake to grace one of the huts. What a fun project. <laughs> Cafe manager David... Hello, my little Chucky chums! ..is helping host the event and wants to see what Dave's got in mind. So you're building a shrine. Well, it is like I'm building a shrine. So it's like the, the halo. Yeah. Dave has ruffled white chocolate to give a heavenly effect and has improvised with the Madonna's child. I think we've got a black baby. Well, you know, Stad was good, so... so... He would be mixed race, wouldn't he? Finished. It's all done. And, wow. You know, I think it looks really Christmassy and kitsch. I think that'll go down well with the Brighton lot. 
But the success of the shop window means it's not all Christmas cheer for Tom. A world-famous music mogul who wants to remain anonymous spotted the Hansel and Gretel house and wants four more to spice up his life. So many little bits and pieces, piecing it all together. There's nothing that I've done which is more complicated than this. The secretive celeb really, really, really wants them bigger, bigger. But financial director Christine is worried that the time it takes to build these intricate houses will actually lose them money. The other Christine brings us all back down to earth if she feels that we're getting carried away with ourselves, being too airy-fairy and forgetting for a moment this is a business. To see exactly where the money's going, Scrooge, like Christine, descends on the studio for a house inspection. It's less about the house, more about the home. It's more about the cost. Dave is also putting his DIY skills to house building. Telling me these are the less expensive ones? Yes, those are the £150 ones. Uh, Dave did those ones. Uh, oh. Cost, Dave, cost. Oh, cost. they're much quicker. I can, um, yeah. I can do three a day. Dave cheats on these, I can see that. Hmm. Those windows aren't real. These windows are real. Open one, then. Penny Pincher Christine lays down the law for Tom's celebrity houses. On a budget. OK. Got mixed messages going on. <laughs> Tom, <laughs> I control the salaries. Mixed messages, no. I feel like I'm the ball in a game of tennis. <laughs> to get the houses finished on time, Chief Designer Dave has stepped in to up the construction. I've completed one house already, and this one will be finished in about half an hour. I'm right on target. I'm really chuffed with myself. Tom, meanwhile, is still taking a painstaking amount of time. I'm not dawdling at all. These houses have to be done to a greater level of detail. They are a mammoth effort. You think you've done something, and then as soon as you do something else, you realise you haven't finished it. So I am the architect and the construction worker and the village idiot. <laughs> I think tomorrow will be a breeze for you, Tom, until half past five, when you might turn into a, a whirling dervish. That's always the way, though, isn't it, Dave? That's always the way. But while Dave has raised two houses today, Tom has only prepped three, and his deadline is the end of play tomorrow. <laughs> December has arrived, and tonight, Dave's Madonna and Child creation will be unveiled at the Beach Hut Advent Calendar event. So Christine and Christine head to the beachfront to check the exhibition space. <laughs> in. In, not out. And there's always time for squabbling. Oh, why are we so short? Get, at six. get hand out of the way! I, I can't stick it to the, the ceiling. I hope that we get this finished before everybody turns up. We're all going to get slightly lashed and try and squeeze into two metres by two metres. But Christine's not the only one facing a tight squeeze. At the studio, Tom has to complete two intricate Hansel and Gretel houses by the end of the day. Got a lot of work to do yet. It's already three o'clock almost, and so I'm going to have to work flat out now to get this one and that one finished. That's a very strict deadline. Resisting his usual instincts for neat, straight lines, Tom concentrates on striking shapes and colours. This is freestyle house building. But despite his efforts, some of the studio team prefer chief designer Dave's. Dave's houses look good, but uh, Tom's is just like, just like average. <gasps> oh! <laughs> <laughs> Yannis yeah, yeah, is uh, yeah. he's pushing my buttons. He's, he's cruising for a bruising over there. <laughs> Although Tom may want to stop right now, thank you very much, he has one last residence to complete. It was tight. It went to the wire with these houses. I wasn't sure if I'd get everything finished to quite the quality I wanted to. But I have. I haven't sort of cut back on anything, really. Everything's there, all the details there. 
There's nothing I wish I could have done more, really. It took some doing, but finally, the houses that I dreamt of. And I think for Tom, that was quite a monumental achievement. But Chocky Wocky Doodah's Christmas work is not yet done. They hope to bring some festive cheer by unveiling their divinely inspired cake at the Beach Hut Advent Calendar event. And the occasion has made cafe manager David come over all angelic. Just another day at work with David. The French fancy strikes again. Joyful all ye nations rise of the herald angels. Westminster Cathedral Choir they're not, but the homely voices of these locals and Chockey's cake give out a fuzzy festive feeling. It feels really Christmassy, everybody's really jolly, and everything looks splendid. For Chocky Wocky Doodah, Christmas has come early. And though it's been a resounding triumph, it's been a costly one for the two Christines. Christine's opening bills, there'll be no Christmas cheer on that face. No, there won't. Next year, the studio might actually learn to work with budgets, which will make my life so much easier. It's very hard, isn't it, being in your world? Yes, my so world is very hard. hard. You must never, never jump clouds and get on my cloud, otherwise you'll ruin my life. If I jump on your cloud, we'll both go through it. 